Well, I'm here at the trailhead. Just signed a log book here. So I'm all registered, if I can figure this out. Dang thing has worked for 50 years until I came along. That doesn't want to close. Let's see. So all signed in, in case anybody wants to come look for me. It is uh, 5 p.m. and it's perfect weather. That is the trail behind me there. And we're going up on top of that mountain right there tonight. So uh, I've got a river to cross first. I think I'll take my shoes off just to keep my feet, or at least my shoes dry. Uh, here we go. series of switchbacks. It's incredibly muddy in this first section here. But uh, I've got a couple hours probably before I can get to the top. <clears throat> it's slow going. Almost 10,000 feet in elevation and I'm already feeling it. <clears throat> Just in the lungs, in the quads, everything is begging for more oxygen and faster oxygen. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna turn this off for a while and focus on getting this vert. There she is. I'll be coming back over that pass from the other side of the mountains in uh, seven or eight days. And then back down this valley, trailhead. Well, I made it up to 10,500 feet. I'm taking a break. Just chilling. That is back the way I came. I'm glad I knocked that climb out the very first day because man, let me tell you, if I were to do that after I'd eaten all my food and, and drank all my water and used all my fuel, it almost wouldn't seem worth it. Pack would have been a quarter of the weight. Guys, I just saw the most beautiful thing. A big old mule, a big old mule deer buck and his harem of does across the trail right in front of me, about 30 yards up. And they stopped to sit and, and eat in this meadow for a minute. And I just sat down there and I watched them they spotted me at one point, but I think I was still enough I kept from spooking them. And now they're not too far off the trail. I can hear them moving around in there. But uh, first big game encounter of the trip, and uh, it's pretty awesome. We just came on an entire herd of elk. 
Looked to be about 50 or 60 of them. This place is thick with them. Well guys, here it is. This is my camp on the very first night. I'm at 11,000 feet, just below. That's the summit of Mount Baldy over there. And uh, pretty close to where I saw all those elk. See the sun is setting. It is 8.51 right now. Make a note of that. What a day. Love Utah. fire going so I can make some oatmeal and uh, you know last night was pretty good I mean it was actually it was really good it was really comfortable <clears throat> it's probably about like 45 degrees right now but uh, the thing that got me last night was about every hour on the hour I would wake up and I think it's this thing that they talk about with altitude where uh, if you're not used to sleeping at altitude your body will go into a phase of breathing where your brain wakes yourself up because it feels like it's not getting enough air I think that was happening last night so hopefully that gets better as I spend time up here and the next couple of days uh, I'll let you know if it changes at all. We've got a beautiful day and hopefully it stays like this all day. I just need my fire to die down enough to have some good coals to put my tea kettle on top of. Guys, this is my base camp for 
next two days. That is Wilson Peak. It's 13,000 feet. And tomorrow, after a little bit of breakfast, a little bit of rest, probably a little bit of fishing, I'm going to try to summit it. But you can see it is really gnarly. This is my campsite. As you can see, I've kind of hunkered down here behind this big pile of rocks. These boulders hopefully are going to block a little bit of the wind tonight because right now it's coming up the canyon pretty well and it's cold like probably 40 ish degrees and that means tonight when the sun's gone completely down it's going to be around freezing not to worry i got my trusty This is it. This is my camp for the night. As you can see, I've got everything kind of set up in here. Got my handy dandy Garmin. Been texting paint. It's awesome. It works really well. Instant comfort. All right, guys, I'm gonna sign off for the night. I'm really tired. I put in about nine miles today and it was all above 10,000 feet. Most of it was close to 11,000 feet. I'm really feeling the elevation. So I've got a good meal in me. I've got a comfortable camp set up. It is, uh, it's only 7.20 p.m. And I'm feeling it. And my body needs some rest. So I'm going to go hit the sack. I'll see you guys in the morning. I made it through the night despite a crazy thunderstorm that happened at like 4.30 this morning. And it came through so fast, it started raining, I grabbed my pack, pulled it under the tent, and uh, then there was thunder and lightning, and the tent stood up to it. Everything was dry when I got out this morning, everything was good. Went and did a little bit of fishing. Uh, nothing's biting, or I'm just a terrible fisherman. And I got hot really fast, which is why I don't have a shirt on right now. So I'm going to make some breakfast and then I'm going to uh, chill some more because I'm tired. It's 11,000 feet up and every movement takes a concerted effort. Well, guys, it's uh, day three. It's 10 o'clock. The weather seems to be holding. So I'm gonna go try to bag Mount Wilson, which is that big pointy peak right up there. It's 13,000 feet, and uh, it's a little over two miles from my base camp. I feel no shame in telling you that just one mile in, I had to stop and take a break. <laughs> it was across nothing but scree fields, boulders the size of basketballs, half of them moving as soon as you put your weight on them and uh, climbed about 300, 400 feet in elevation. Now I'm at 11,500. I feel like every foot in elevation 
takes away half the oxygen that I used to have. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But it's beautiful and amazing here. Coming for you, buddy. Right there. Check out the view of Red Castle from over here on the other side of the lake. So I finally remembered what the dang little rabbit, mouse, rat looking thing is that I keep seeing. It's a rock pika. And uh, basically, it looks like if Pikachu were a real animal, Pikachu would be a rock pika. That's what they look like. Kind of like a baby cottontail with tiny ears. And they're about the size of a baseball. They're running around all over the place in these little rocks. I don't know if you can hear it. I got one yelling at me right now. Those are birds. So this is probably the last time that I'll get to shoot myself and capture Wilson Peak in the background because I'm going up that ridge line. You won't be able to see the peak anymore because I'm going to be on it. Check out this view. 11,800 feet. I'm Mount Goats. Snowfield, right in the middle of the picture. Just about that. It's about a, a dozen little white flecks. They're moving around. Those are mountain goats. So that is awesome. Twelve thousand eight hundred feet. It's the ridge line I'm following right now. It's about as narrow as it looks. It's Wilson right there. Maybe a quarter mile. Look, there's King's Peak. Well, I suppose I'm mostly making this video right now for my mom so she can see just how sheer the drop off is over that ridge. That is uh, 2,000 feet straight down, baby. Don't worry, I'm not going that close. And uh, you can see the other side of the ridge line is fairly gradual. Not that it wouldn't kill you if you took a tumble down that. But it's this uh, north side that's the killer. I'm gonna stay away from that. Guys, made it to the top of Mount Wilson, over 13,000 feet. That was a tough climb, but so worth it. Just on top of the world here. You can see every major 13er in Utah from this vantage point. Stay at Wilson Peak is just about done. I'm going to go back down to my camp at Red Castle Lake, rest and eat some food, and see if I can't plan out a way to get to King's Peak tomorrow.
Well, it's been a really good two days here. And uh, I haven't caught any fish because I haven't really tried. Because I was busy bagging Wilson Peak. But uh, it's time to move on. I'm going to go around to the other side of Red Castle. Try to hit the pass. Meet up my friend. And uh, we're going to go try to get King's Peak either tonight or tomorrow. I'm aging and getting slower and fatter and grayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my friend Eric, who just ran up here in like three hours from the trailhead. <laughs> You're making great time, dude. Made it over Smith's Fork Pass, a little over 12,000 feet at the top of that. That one hurt. Carrying this pack over that height was painful and slow. And I know Eric was, uh, he was slowing down for me and waiting for me because he was carrying his little trail pack and he's just fast in general. But uh, man, that made the last seven miles so awesome. That dude ran 12 miles up the trail this morning to meet me and accompany me over that pass into this basin and just to hang out and he's going to put in a total of 40 miles today now uh, i can't say that that's completely unusual for him but the fact that he'd do that out here and uh, come spend some time with me and share getting over that mountain pass was just awesome he's a good dude There she is. That is King's Peak right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up camp right around here. That's about three miles to the top and uh, two and a half thousand feet in elevation gain. So that's tomorrow. It's Sunday night, the end of my fourth day out here. And uh, had a really good day. This is my new base camp. I'm gonna be here for two days while I go summit King's Peak tomorrow. It's my son Jaden's 11th birthday, so I'm gonna summit King's Peak in his honor. Interesting fact, Jaden loves King Kong. And when you put King into the iPhone, and you type it in, somehow, for some reason, it always autocorrects to Kong. So tomorrow, Jaden, for you, I'm gonna summit King Kong. Love you, buddy. This is my view from the base camp here. That point you see right there is South King's Peak. King's Peak is just over the top of those trees. Can't quite see it. I'm missing my other camp right about now because had so many great rocks to sit on, cook on, and use as a table. And this morning, it got so cold last night, it got down to freezing. So I threw my e-blanket over the uh, trusty sleeping bag, and that got me toasty warm. 
problem is the e-blanket doesn't breathe at all. So it traps all your perspiration and uh, gets things kind of wet. I'm gonna leave this out here. Try a little bit more. And I had to clear that rock because it's my sitting rock. Man, I was sure glad to see the sun this morning. As soon as it came up over that ridge, the temperature jumped from like 32 to 50 degrees. <clears throat> and now, sitting in the sun, it's probably even warmer than that. I got me some oatmeal. I'm fueling up to go get King's Peak. Mmm. Instant oatmeal is the backpacker's best friend. Well, it has turned into an incredibly beautiful morning. And I'm headed up King's Peak right now. Should take me maybe four hours. We'll see. I'm not worried about rushing it. I just want to have fun. Well, there he is. That's King's Peak. I'm at about 11,500 feet right now, marked by this gigantic cairn. And uh, I have to take a rest break. I'm only like six tenths of a mile from my camp, but I've gone up 600 feet and uh, feeling it. That's news of the day. The next three quarters of a mile are flat. Not sure. I spotted a big herd of sun. Could just be sheep. Fat on grass. And then I cut straight across the valley, heading for the switchbacks that are shown on the map. And I don't know about you, I cannot see any switchbacks up there. Map says they're close. So I did find a little trail here. Hopefully this will lead me right to it. I'm going off trail again because the map says there it is I can see it there's the trail right over there boom this is it top of King's Peak it's the top of the world man highest point in Utah and you can literally see hundreds of miles into Wyoming and everywhere else I just got done making a phone call to Kate and Jaden, because I've got Verizon coverage up here. I've got four bars on Verizon. It's the craziest thing. So after days of having no contact, it's really nice to be able to talk to them. Um, 13,528 feet.
done. base camp. Just got back from bagging King's Peak. That was awesome. I went way off trail on the way back because it felt good and uh, did an extra mile and a half in the high country and uh, saw a couple of deer. A lot of sign of elk. Didn't see any elk though. But uh, I mean, it was beautiful. It was a perfect day. Couldn't have asked for it to go any better. The weather was amazing. Gotta make sure those are level. And this is a windbreak. Oil's about three times as fast. We just filled up on water again from the creek that's running by my camp here. And uh, this is gonna be really good. So I didn't have any water for the last two miles or so. Oh yeah, that's good. Nothing tastes as good as cold water, especially when it's clean right out of the mountain stream. I filtered it, Mom. Don't worry. <clears throat> All right, let's see. What have we got? <sighs> Making dinner. Oh. So, let's see what we have. I have a bag of bacon jerky. Still have a lot of this, about half of this dry sausage left. I'm not sure that's going to keep much longer. Of course, my trusty bag of chili cheese Fritos. I never go backpacking without this. I've got ramen. I'm not going to eat ramen tonight. I earned grab bag. Let's see. Beef stroganoff with noodles. That'll do. Got a Slim Jim. <sighs> Might eat this later. Yes, 
Paparindo. These are for dessert. Well, let's eat that. Let's see how I feel. I might have some of these. I'm really hungry. Nine miles is a long way, especially at this elevation. I just wanted to share this landscape with you while I'm eating. Just amazing. slower. gonna build a fire <clears throat> and my 12 year old be, will be disappointed but I'm not gonna use a sparker or flint and steel I'm gonna use this awesome little torch that I found at a Walmart gas station and it is the best and I don't think I'll ever come into the backcountry again without it so I'm gonna build this up uh, get this thing lighted. Helps to have a nice little breeze. Well, you can already tell it's going to be cold tonight. So I think I'm going to keep this fire going for a while, build it up, 
So I've got a nice hot bed of coals waiting for me in the morning. Might even use a hand warmer in the old sleeping bag tonight. So that's the uh, wisdom of many nights and cold campouts speaking. Stick a hot hand warmer down in the bottom of the foot of your sleeping bag. You won't have to worry about cold feet. It's been a perfect day. Well, I'm leaving behind base camp number two and headed back to the High Line Trail, which I'm on right now. I'm gonna follow this basically as far as I can today while I still have daylight and while my legs and feet will uh, let me keep going. The goal is to do about 16 miles. We'll see how that goes. But uh, say bye to King's Peak up there. So there's King's Peak in the background. The only time we'll see him again is if I get up on top of one of these bigger mountains further towards the west. Otherwise, it's tough, tough for now, buddy. Y'all, caught a fish. This looks uh, like a brook trout, I think. And, uh, oh man, look at this. Fish are really biting today. It's another good brookie. And, buddy. Fish number two at Tungsten Lake. These brook are really biting on the uh, spinner lures. We're gonna put him back out there. See if maybe one more will come in. Fish number three. These brookies just keep getting bigger and bigger. If it was dinner time, I'd eat this one. All right, buddy, back you go. Brookie number four at Tungsten. <laughs> this one's a fighter. This is brookie number five at Tungsten Lake. This is another one I'd eat if it was dinner time, but you know what, buddy? You get lucky. It's too early for that. Guys, I'm like the world's worst fisherman, so uh, these fish are hungry. Numero seis. What's up, buddy? That's number eight right there. This is number 10. In my memory, I have never had a 10 fish day. And he's a beauty too. That is the biggest fish of the day for sure. It was about 13 inches. Okay, he's bending over my pole. Whew. Look at this guy, huh? Yeah. Come on now. Number 10. Calm yourself. I want you to live. So. Well guys, 10 brook trout with that last one being like 
two pounds and 13 inches long. I think I'm gonna call it for this lake. That's a great day of fishing, I think, in anyone's book. But for me, it's like unimaginable. I've never caught 10 fish in a day, especially not 10 brook trout. So uh, cheers to Tungsten Lake. For future reference, that is Porcupine Pass. It's, uh, it was a bear coming down this direction, but going up it, I imagine, would be just terrible. <laughs> so for that reason alone, I think I would do the east to west Highline, Highline, tri Highline Trail. Whew, a little oxygen deprived, maybe. All right, <clears throat> this is the new basin that I'm in. And uh, that little promontory right there is where I'm headed to, just to get around that. If I can do that today, I'll be super happy. But that's like seven miles away. Left 13 miles today. I found a really cool, legit fire ring. I stocked up on some big logs. I'm gonna try to keep this thing going all night. It's really quiet here. Well guys, it is Wednesday morning. Just broke camp above uh, Larson Lake. I'm on the back side of the Uintas, the south slope. And I'm headed toward a monster pass and uh, Dead Horse Lake and uh, Red Dome. Those are the landmarks that I'm shooting for today. Last night was my best sleep out here. I don't know if it's because my body's adjusting to the elevation or what, but it was still down in the 30s. My watch said it was 35, but uh, didn't feel cold. Only woke up twice. And uh, yeah, it was a good night. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's a bad idea to camp anywhere near a dead stand tree. The trail goes right through there. It looks like those fell not too long ago. You don't want to be under one of those when it falls. This is the first glimpse I've had of the pass that I have to cross today. See that little notch right there? That's it. The entire Highline Trail, which is what I'm on right now, is marked by these big old cairns. So, even if you didn't have a map, it would be nearly impossible to get lost, at least from the standpoint of where the trail is. Sadly, there were no fish in this lake. Can't blame them. I wouldn't live this high up either. See those clouds right over that peak? That's Mount Lavinia. That's the pass we're going over. We, I don't know why I keep saying we or we're, it's just me, me and my pack. Me and my pack are going up over there. But look, it's already, there's hail or rain or something falling on the top of Lavinia. Hopefully it doesn't come down into the pass. This is it. view that I've been looking for. So down in that valley, the Highline Trail goes down that hill, across that valley, it's Dead Horse Lake over there, and then it goes back up over one of those passes, over to the south side.
that's Explorer Peak. It's like 12,600 or something like that. But more important, it's got Crater Lake down at the foot of it. And you can just barely see the edge of Crater Lake there. It's supposed to be the most amazing aquamarine blue. That's the valley I came from. Listen, I reached what will be the highest point for the rest of my journey. Uh, 12,155 feet. And uh, it is its own unique prominence here, but it's not named, so I'm naming it. This is Nichols Peak. And it's got just about the best view in all of the High Uinta Mountains. And I built an appropriate cairn to mark the location. <laughs> Let's come back and visit. You want some sheep? There's got to be like 2,000 or so here. Look at this. I found wild strawberries. Mmm. So tiny. Freaking exhausted. I expected to go seven miles today and end up going ten. And that Red Knob Pass is no joke. It's been about two and a half miles at 12,000 plus feet. I'm bush. Stay in the mountains. Pack feels a lot lighter. It's time to go home. Check out this cool old cabin that we found. That's a cool old cabin. Wonder how long it's been up here. This river is actually part of the headwaters for 
it turns into the Bear River and then eventually fills up Bear Lake. <laughs> you guys, this is it. Forerunner. There is the Forerunner. And there is the trail that I headed down. Man, I, right now all I want is a cold Coke and a cheeseburger. <laughs> so I can go meet my brother and sister at Crown Burger. I'll see you next time.